Kit McLeod here, and today we're going to do something completely different. I mean, not even vaguely related to anything else you've seen on this channel. Today we're going to talk about zombies. That's right, zombies. Now, some of you may be thinking this is maybe this is going to have some sort of clever ending where this goes and relates into religion or politics or some of the other shit that I normally talk about. It's not. It's it, this is an, an entire video about zombies. So, if you're not into that sort of thing, you can just turn it off right now, and I hope to see you again next video. The rest of us, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about how to survive a zombie outbreak. Now, first of all, we need to figure out what kind of zombies we're looking at here. Uh, a lot of people figure, differentiate their zombies by fast or slow. Like, are we talking 28 days later sprinters, or are we talking uh, night of the living dead shufflers? I actually think the division should be alive or dead. Now, the dead zombies are probably going to be the shufflers. They're not going to be jumping over cars, climbing up ropes, and, and, you know, sprinting across the street. It's not going to happen. Living zombies, like the 28 Days Later variety, now we're talking. The reason I say that there's really no combination here, the, the Dawn of the Dead remake, the Return of the Living Dead, those kind of zombies, is because well, you kind of need your muscles and your ligaments to be working a certain way in order to even run. So... You know, the idea of something bringing the dead back to life, some sort of a chemical, some sort of a disease or parasite, um, I can buy that. I mean, we have weird shit in our, in our world as it is. You know, go Google brain-eating parasites and just skim the first dozen or so results you get. And you'll find that this is not actually that far out of our grasp. If by some strange scenario there was something that actually made dead people rise up, they would not be doing the 100-yard dash. It's just not going to happen. Um, even if a dead body had just been just a de a dead for less than a day or so, its joints would snap under the pressure of a sprint around the block. Either your fast zombies are going to be alive, or your slow zombies are going to be dead. Not going to see any crossover there. This makes a difference, tactically. With your slow variety, well, as long as you have some sort of a perimeter around your house, even a good chain link fence, that's probably going to keep them out. Um, with the fast ones, well, with fast ones, you, you gotta, you gotta haul ass. You gotta get out of there. Now, living zombies have an interesting weakness. They will eventually starve. That's great. You can really use that to your advantage. If you're holed up someplace and, and you're pretty sure they're not gonna come through, you really haven't got long to wait. Twenty-eight days is about roughly how long the human body can survive without food. That's assuming that you're getting enough rest. That uh, you're not really taxing yourself. You're not sick, you're not injured, you have shelter. Uh, 28 days is pushing it. And that's also assuming you have water, you're staying hydrated. These zombies would have died of thirst in less than a week. And again, that's with rest and, and you know, proper care. I mean, these guys are puking blood all over the place, they're jumping up and down and screaming at everybody and they're beating the shit out of each other. Uh, I mean, look at this guy here. I give him 28 hours. Tops. So, living zombies, you can probably outweigh them. Just gotta get the fuck away from them. Keep quiet, and that's a real big thing too. Shut the fuck up. The characters in these films, they die because they just couldn't shut the fuck up. Um, you know, so if you, if you see your neighbors starting to shuffle around like zombies, don't start boarding up the house. Just keep the doors closed, stay the fuck away from the windows, don't make any noise, don't turn on the lights and they'll probably leave you the fuck alone. Now next I want to talk about this book here, The Zombie Survival Guide. This tells you a lot of things that I think are just plain wrong, and I'll tell you why. First of all, it tells you to get away from your house. Uh, this is a mistake. What you want to do is have your house be fortified for any emergency. I mean, 
it's a good idea, with or without the threat of zombies, that you have some uh, canned rations, that uh, you have water, you have uh, extra batteries. Uh, you know, there's things that you need to keep the house moving if the power goes out because of a natural disaster, hurricane, earthquake, flood, or the invasion of zombies. Okay, so you don't have to go all Y2K on us, but you should have enough supplies to last you for at least a good month. Okay, uh, food, water, batteries, uh, flashlights, candles, a couple of tools, anything you need around the house. I mean, you go and take over some new shelter, you take over a prison or any of these uh, great places that they talk about in the guide. Well, that's all good and well, but what are you going to eat? You know, even if you're in a Walmart or one of these places, it's loaded with food. It's not going to last more than a couple of days. Produce isn't going to last for more than a couple of days. Meat, cheese, dairy, anything like that, it's not going to last for more than a couple of days, especially if the power goes out. So, you need canned goods, dried goods, all the stuff you'd have for a normal emergency. If the shit hits the fan, just stay in your house. If you have a fence around your yard, all the better. If you don't, wouldn't be a bad idea to build one. If you live in an apartment, this is actually an easier place to defend than a house because you have your little spot to take care of. If you live in an apartment that has an elevator going up and down that has a little key that you need, that's great. No one's getting in or out of that place. Power goes out, the elevator's down, all you gotta do is worry about one little staircase going up to all the apartments. You could barricade a staircase pretty easily. The only thing with apartments is if you're talking about the dead zombies, is this something that is a virus, like the guide says, or is it something that is spread out throughout the world? So, if it's the Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead scenario, anybody who dies becomes a zombie, eh, then an apartment doesn't seem so great because a lot of fucking old people live in those places. Okay, so let's recap, shall we? If a zombie attack occurs, stay indoors, don't make noise, don't turn on the lights, don't let anybody know you're in there, lock your doors, stay quiet, have lots of food available, have lots of supplies available, have lots of water available. Basically, have your house ready for an everyday normal emergency, as we all should. Um, don't try to attack the zombies because primarily if you think a zombie attack is happening it probably isn't you may just have really strange neighbors and you don't want to shoot them uh, because you'll get yourself in a lot of trouble also in the one in a million shot that an actual zombie attack does happen i don't care how many movies you've seen you don't know what's gonna kill a zombie i mean just stay away from them and hope the whole thing blows over. Unless you're Andy from the Dawn of the Dead remake. Then, if you know you're looking at a bunch of reanimated corpses and you have a perfectly safe place to be and all the ammo in the world, have a ball. Who am I to stop you? And that, more or less, is how to survive a zombie attack. This is Kit McLeod. Happy Halloween.